Hello there, my name is Isma. So this is part two of our training series on how to create add-ons for Blender. And uh, yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do is uh, create a playlist where you can find all these videos organized and I'll be sharing that in the link in the description so you can find everything there. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So I'm going to be using the Visual Studio IDE, but you can use anything else like Sublime or Not++. Plus Plus. Everything will work, but uh, I'm just using Visual Studio because I find it more easier to work with. And if you want to get that, just go to Google and type in uh, Visual Studio studio and download uh, the visual studio dot microsoft dot com go to that and uh, download it directly here now install it the process of installation is very straightforward so after installing installing it uh, you it's going to look something like this uh, without all of this then what we're going to do is uh, we want to start working on the add-on directly uh, so you want to navigate to your blender add-ons folder and uh, for windows you can just hold on your windows key and then r to get this run pop up and then type in percent temp percent hit enter and uh, it should take you to this temporary uh, folder you just have to go to application data and roaming then find the blender foundation folder blender then select whatever version you have installed or whatever version you're going to be are creating the add-on for the add-on should work in any version of blender after 2.83 there are few changes that are being made to uh, three to blend up three so I'm not sure how it's going to work there but uh, for now uh, you can use any version uh, that is within 2.2.8 and uh, 2.93 if it's not working in your version just try 2.93 and uh, just to make sure that you we're on the, on the same page all the time just download 2.93 because that's what I'm going to be developing in within this project so so that we have we are following the same things so go into that folder and then under scripts add-ons you'll find all the add-ons that are installed on your in your blender and now we're just going to create a new folder for for our add-on and uh, we're going to call this blender add-on very creative no? name so then uh, open that folder and this is where all of our python files are going to sit if you go to the uh, scripting uh, side i've changed my interface to look like this so that it will be very easier for me to work with i don't need uh, the text editor uh, so that's why you don't see it here but uh, by default you will have uh, the text editor somewhere here because i'm not going to be using it i'm going to be doing everything in uh, in the ide i don't have to be viewing it so i'm going to be switching it from the text editor to the 3d window so that i can easily interface with my add-on uh, which you can't see here because we haven't activated it uh, if you go to try and search it right now uh, which is i think we called it blender blender add-on you can see that uh, it's not anywhere in the script because Blender has no way of knowing that there is an add-on called that. So let's set up that. Uh, I'm also going to be copying directly from uh, an add-on I'm working here. I'm working on right now because it's easier for me rather than just typing everything from my head, which is a bit difficult to memorize. I'll be copying everything from here. And now you can see the folder structure we're going to be following here. You don't necessarily have to follow this, but I found that this is the best way to keep my code clean and maintain it easily. You can see we're going to need about five uh, files. You don't need all of them. You can, you might, you can even just work with just the init uh, Python file and uh, you'll be fine, but it's going to be very hard for you to maintain your code. You can see that uh, in my init file, this is all the code I need. And then I'm importing or I'm using files like uh, the property fu functions, functions, properties, UI buttons and uh, UI panel. I'm naming it them this way because it makes it easy for me to remember what panel to look into if I get an error or if I want to add any function or any classes into those functions. So let's do that in Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, I'm just going to open up a new window, a new blank window. It's most likely if you are just installed uh, Visual Studio, this is how your, your window is going to look. So go under file and open folder then navigate to where you have the add-on installed or just go into the folder itself and just drag it directly in here and uh, you can trust the developer because that's you yourself and then all the, the folder will be loaded into blender into visual studio now we don't have any files just yet so let's go on and create them again you can see the file structure that we are going to use are uh, this pi cache python makes that itself so let me just move this to my second screen so that we can start working on the files 
Now the first thing we're going to need, need is the init file. This is going to de define or give instructions to Blender on how to load the add-on. Let's create a new folder here and call it, you have to type in this, uh, I'm not sure how it's, how it's called, but uh, this uh, lower dash twice and then init. Uh, this is the file that Blender will look for when it's loading in uh, the add-on. When Blender first opens, it goes through all the add-on folder looking for this file. So make sure that you follow the naming convention here. So when you create that, we're going to start by adding this BL info just to describe uh, the name, author, description, just everything here. Just copy uh, this and uh, paste it here. Everything here is uh, self-explanatory. So I'm going to call this Blender add-on. The version number here matters. Blender, I think 8, 3 and above doesn't load anything below 2.8. So make sure that uh, whatever version you choose here is above 2.8. Otherwise, Blender will just ignore that add-on and not load it because the API changed a lot that uh, any version, any add-ons below uh, 2.8 don't work into in Blender 2.8 and above. So make sure you have this above 2.8. Let's make sure we're saving this. What we're going to need is the register and uh, unregister functions. So the register function is just what the instructions that tell Blender to register the add-on. Otherwise, if you don't have that, then Blender will not register that add-on uh, to be used in Blender. So let's create those. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that. Let me just paste it in here. As I said in the beginning of this course, this is not a training series on Python, it's a training series on Blender development. But I'm going to try and explain some of the things here. So a function is just a collection of code that you can reuse by calling it somewhere else. So here we, do, we are defining a function and in Python you just define a function using def and then the name of the function and then uh, brackets, you add a semicolon and whatever you have here. So let me just show you here in the quickly in the console. So if I'm defining a function, I'll just do something like def, uh, let's say home, and uh, then that's the name of the function, and then curly braces, oh sorry, brackets, and then semicolon or colony, and then enter. Uh, this is where you want the code to be. So it's just a collection, a function is just a collection of code. So I'm going to create my code here, say create a variable, which is uh, a way to, to store any value. Uh, so a variable x, let's call it, let's give it a, Let's make it equal to 10, enter, and then a variable b that equals to 40. And then, as I said, a function is just a collection of code. So we are creating our collection of code here. Uh, let's see, let's print the value of x plus uh, plus b, and then we can exit the function. So that is our collection of our collection of code. So if I want to run that code again, I just have to call home and then it should print uh, whatever code, it should run whatever code uh, I've added into that function. So I can call this however, however much I want. So that's exactly what the register function does. Let me open up Blender. Blender will go into the, the add-on folder and look for all the add-ons in there. Inside those add-on folders, it will try to find the init file. And if it finds it, it will try to load that add-on. And uh, in, inside the init file, it, lo it looks for the register function and the unregister function. So uh, let's get rid of this and just add a print statement just to show you when Blender runs this. I usually like to add a print statement here so that I know that uh, my add-on has loaded. Add-on, let's call this add-on unregistered. So after the register and unregister function, you can see that uh, we have this piece of code, which is just telling Blender to, to actually run uh, the register function because here it's just defining, we're just defining the register and run unregister function. And uh, here we are calling it, just type in this exactly as it is. Uh, it's just telling Blender, whenever you run into the init file, just run this function. Uh, so, and that is going to be when we load in our, when we check our add-on here. Okay, so this is all the code you need to have an add-on appear in the add-ons installation. And uh, that, let's, let's go through it. So you need to create a folder, call it whatever name you want, and then define an init file. And that init file needs to have the Blender info. And I ne need to make sure that you set up the name here. So the name here is just going to be the name that you, you will type in here. So let's say if I change this to uh, something, something, save, refresh, uh, make sure we 
also search for something something you see that uh, the name that you type in here is what you're going to get here so let's make sure that this is uh, well named i'm going to call it blender add-on i usually like to make sure that uh, the name of the folder is the name of the add-on just makes it easy for me to work like that so i'm going to refresh here and uh, search for uh, blender add-on and you can see here so when you open up blender for the first time it will it will look through the add-ons folder and go through each folder and try to find the init file when it finds an init file it will try to read the blender info inside that init file and if it finds the blender info there it will show that add-on in the add-ons list as you can see as we have it here and if we expand here you can see that uh, the details we have added here are what we are seeing here are uh, the location, author, the version, and uh, that's it. So now if we activate it, I want to show you something here. So if I open up the console, you will see everything. Let me just exp do. I, I wish there was a way to just show the console within the main window, but uh, it doesn't seem to be possible. So uh, this is the Blender console and you access it under window, toggle system console. I'm just going to move it here. After Blender reads this info, it will just list the add-on in the add-on selection in the add-on list, but it won't actually activate it. So to activate it, you just hit that icon and you can see that uh, if I hit or remove this, register or unregister the add-on or activate or disactivate the add-on, you can see that uh, we're getting some information here. Uh, we're getting the Blender add-on loaded and uh, the Blender unregister unregistered add on unregistered and this is what we are seeing what, what we added in here so these functions the register and unregister are rain whenever the add on is activated or deactivated now you don't really need these statements here these print statements in your add on but i like to add them there just to give me a visual visual idea that uh, the add on has actually been registered successfully and uh, everything is working fine so but right now, the add-on doesn't really do much. So in the next lesson, we'll be looking at how to add uh, a panel like what you see I did in the asset library, something like this, or in uh, my home detailer add-on that I'm creating here. So we're going to create a, pattern, a panel uh, that sits in the 3D viewer and uh, on the left here, and it will have the name and the panel itself here. And we are going to create a few panels. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Uh, um, again, I'm going to be leaving a link for the entire playlist of this uh, course in the description. Thank you for watching.